Great to see you here again in this new video. In the previous videos, we were talking about probabilities, and I already spoke about the roulette game, the roulette game that you can find in casinos. And we want to see what it does, how it works, how you can see that the bank always wins. But before we continue, have a click on the subscribe button, click on the bell button, and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. So the roulette game, the little wheel that is one of the most iconic games in casinos. It looks like this. So we have the different elements that you have. You have all the numbers from 1 till 36. And 1, 0, we have pass, monk, pair, impair, red, black. And then we have on the bottom the different other possibilities where you can play at. Now these are the things that you have and the roulette that you have here is in fact what we call the European roulette. There are three types of roulette, the European, the American and the Mexican. So when you're looking at probabilities, you have to first understand what type of roulette game, what type of roulette you are playing on. And of course, we don't include Russian roulette because this is a completely different game. When we look at this roulette game, the European roulette, we have 36 numbers plus one zero. So the probability to have one number coming out of the roulette wheel is in fact one out of 37. So there are 37 possibilities to one. And that's important to understand. Now, when we look at the law of the large numbers and when we look at roulette games, people think when certain numbers have appeared for a certain time, the numbers that didn't appear before have a higher probability of appearing in the next game. Now, what we see is all these numbers are supposed to have the same probability. They're basically random. They have to be very well equilibrated so that every number has the same probability. There was an event where some people, I think from Poland or some other country, went to a casino and they were they were in fact measuring the stability of the roulette wheel to find out if there was a sector which has a higher probability. They didn't touch the roulette, they were just measuring it, although they were being kicked out of the casino. But the thing was, is there some way that we can predict or find numbers that have a higher probability? And the owner of the casino, of course, wants to avoid this. And they have to change the roulette wheels regularly. They have to be balanced again so that every number really has the same probability. Now, the thing about looking at the numbers and writing down which numbers already occurred has basically no sense because the game does not have a memory. It doesn't remember what the previous number was and it doesn't have an effect on the next game you're playing. Every game is a new game, always with the same probability. In this case, 1 out of 37 when, to one, when you want to find one specific number. For example, you want to find 13, like I did when I was on the island of Jeju. When you put your chips on number 13, you have one chance in 37 that that number will be selected. Now, what we want to understand here is when we play on the roulette game, what is the expected value? What is the expected value when we put the chip on one of those numbers? And when we look at the events, we, of course, have mutually exclusive events and we want to know the expected value. For the casino owner, it's very important that they want to make a profit in long term. So the expected value for the casino should be positive, but for you, basically, it will be negative because the casino will always win. Now, when we look at the probability, we have to look at the probability and the expected value. First of all, when we have that number that we selected, what is the probability of that number and what is the payout? So when we select number 13, we want to know, or we know, when that number comes out, we have 35 times our value of the chip. 
On the other hand, there are 36 possibilities out of 37 that you will lose the money. So basically what we want to calculate is the expected value for one euro. And we will look at some different games that you can play on the roulette. Here we have the different bets that you can play on the roulette. We look at the European roulette and the different probabilities. Straight up is basically the probability that you will have a specific number. Since we have 37 possibilities, numbers from 1 till 36 and 1, 0, we have one chance in 37 and the same to have the 0, one chance in 37 to win the bet. Payout for 1 euro in that case is 35 to 1. So when you have that number, when the roulette returns the number that you selected, and you put there 1 euro, you will get 35 euros. We have a split, so those are two adjoining numbers. We have 2 out of 37, but the payout is only 17 to 1. And we have all those different games. And when we look at the bottom, we look at odd even, red, black, and monk and pass, we see that the payout is 1 to 1, and the probability is 1837. It's not, it's lower than 50%. So let's have a look at the expected value for different of those games, and we start with a number. A number is 0 up to 36. Now, we say that there are 36 plus 1 possibilities, which gives a probability of occurrence which is equal to 1 over 37. The payout you can get of when the number is correct is 35 to 1. And let's express that in expected value. The expected value for 1 euro is in fact 35 times the probability that the number returned by the roulette wheel. So we have 35 times 137 times 1 euro minus 36 over 37 times 1 euro. And when we, we calculate the value here, we see that we have minus 1 over 37, which is basically equal to minus 2.7%. So this means that the roulette game has a negative expected value for you of 2.7%, but on the other hand, there is an expected value for every euro that is played, which is 2.7% for the bank or the casino. We can do another calculation, odd and even, for example. We are looking at the possibilities here. We have 36 plus 1 possibilities, and we have 18 possible outcomes. 18 numbers between 0 and 36 are odd or even. 0 is neither odd nor even. So we have 18 possibilities out of 37 that we selected the right value, odd or even. Now, well, the payout in this case, like we saw in the table, is not so much. So you put there 1 euro, you get 1 euro back. Let's have a look at the expected value. Now we have 8 out of 37 multiplied with 1 euro, what you get minus 19 divided by 37 times 1 euro, that's in fact the loss. And again, we find 1 divided by 37 or minus 1 divided by 37, which is again minus 2.7%. So in this case, the bank has an advantage of 2.7%. Six in line, it's a different way that we can make a bet and we can do the calculations for all the bets. So we can say that there are, there are 60, or sorry, there are 36 plus 1 possibilities, which in this case give a probability of the occurrence of 6 in a line, which is 6 divided by 37. And the payout when you get 6 in line correct is 5 to 1. So when we win, when we put 1 euro there, we in fact get 5 euro back. When we lose, we lose 1 euro. The same formula here, the expected value for 1 euro is 5 euro times 6 divided by 37. That's the payout when you get it right, but there is only 6 out of 37 probability that you get it, minus the loss, 31 over 37, 
When we calculate it, we find again minus 1 over 37, and the profit for the bank is again 2.7%, minus 2.7% for you. We can now look at some other roulettes. We look at 6 in line for the American and the Mexican roulette. Like I said before, we don't look at the Russian roulette. For the American roulette, we have 38 possibilities. And we now we have to adjust the formula. Instead of dividing by 38, we have six, six possibilities out of 38. In the previous one, we only had 37 possibilities. But it also means that we have 38 minus 6 possibilities that we lose. And here we find 5 times 6 divided by 38 minus 32 divided by 38. And now we find minus 2 divided by 38. And here we find minus 5.26%. So it's basically a higher percentage in favor of the bank, but negative for you. The other, the Mexican roulette, we have 39 possibilities. There we have 0, double zero, and triple zero. And we can rewrite the equation here. We have still 5 times 36 divided by 39 minus 39. Uh, sorry, 33 divided by 39 is minus 7.69%. So it's basically more interesting for you to play the European roulette. And certainly I would avoid, avoid to play for the Mexican roulette because you have the lowest possibility for gain. So that was it for these calculations. Let's just have an overview of all the possibilities that you have in this table. And you see that for the European roulette, we have an expected value of minus 2.7%. For the American, minus 5.26%. And for the Mexican, minus 7.69%. So that was it what I wanted to explain to you related to the roulette, the calculation of the expected value. And of course, before finishing the video, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Click on the bell button and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you about it. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Bye bye.